eight miles north of Blackpool lies Fleetwood, boasting a beautiful marina with access to the River Weir and Irish Sea. It was once a bustling fishing port until the Cod Wars of the 60s and 70s, which put thousands of skilled fishermen and their vessels out of work. And there's one casualty that still remains on the sea bed. After six months underwater, it's time for this precious scrap to be fished out. And it's down to Reuben Richings and the team from Adler and Allen to do just that. But it's an operation riddled with hazards. This is a 60 year old vessel that's not designed to be lifted out of the water. So we have to use our experience and our knowledge and our understanding of the materials and the design and the build so as not to put a life at risk as we're doing this operation. Rescuing a scrapped boat out of the water requires a lot of kit and getting the operation off the ground has been a lengthy process. Since the vessel went down because she's got pollutants on board, there's fuel on board, there's engine oil, etc. We've had a containment boom in, maintained since, since the summer. But with permissions finally in place, Reuben has a plan. It's going to be probably three stages. The first one to get her upright and break the suction with the mud, which is going to be quite challenging. We'll then lift her on the airbags in stages until we can get enough freeboard and the divers can get round the hold and then we'll try and pump her out. Getting the vessel out of the water requires a crack team of divers. Sam Connolly is the captain of the diving crew. First job this afternoon, Ross is going in. This should be quite a quick, maybe an hour's dip. Put two five-ton bags like this on the port side, 10-ton lift. We're planning now for the next dive to get two five-ton open parachute bags on the starboard side. So we've got 20-ton lift there, potentially. We've got 20-ton lift yeah. on the prop shaft. For belt embraces, in case one of them goes, we are going to put a chain round all four. Getting the boat out of the dock is no easy feat. This 70 foot long, 10 foot deep fishing vessel is made of timber and metal. Sitting 18 feet down on the seabed, first the dive team must find fixing points around the vessel on the bow, stern, port and starboard. They'll attach chains and straps to these and the inflatable bags. Next, they will gently inflate the bags and float the vessel, waiting for the high tide to finish the job. The boat will then be towed to ground and pulled on shore, where it will be demolished. I just don't want it pop into the surface. No, I, need it, I need it to come up right yeah. and, then, and then we look at yeah. lifting it. The boat has spent so long underwater, it's stuck in the mud. Our main concern is the amount of suction you got on the seabed. To get all the flotation bags under the boat, the divers need to get between the mud and the hull. Just a quick leak check. So it goes below the surface and they check to see if there's any bubbles coming out of anywhere there shouldn't be. So we'll just drop down, hold his breath slightly, and they look for any bubbles from the surface and then it gets all clear to go. But it's a false start. Oh, mate. He's found some bubbles. Yeah, it's done properly now. Uh, diver's on his way. OK, Roger. Diver travelling. Finally, they can try to get the flotation bags under the boat. Diver's currently travelling from the front of the boat to the back of the boat. Uh, he's going to get handed a couple of bags where he's going to um, drag those down to the seabed and attach them to the uh, prop shaft. Project manager Ruben is monitoring the divers from his boat. For safety reasons, we'll only work daylight hours, um, but to a diver, it doesn't matter if it's night or day, it's the conditions underwater are the same. Uh, it's only from a safety aspect from the surface. With an underwater shuffle and a shimmy, two long flotation bags are in place at the front and back of the boat. Two port ones, two starboard ones are now attached. The diver's now making his way forward to uh, assist the chains going under the bow. One of the chains is stuck. 
Okay, so they've tried pulling the uh, chain up on the uh, port side, but it's getting snagged at the kill. I don't think you'll be able to get your body under there, but if you could use your legs to assist it getting underneath the kill, mate. It just won't budge. We'll give it a little pull, and let's see if we can get it. If it doesn't work, we'll get the winch on it. We've got 40 minutes till we have to get you out of the water. Our permit runs out. So the chain currently is going down around the hull, is it? If you can make the join on the deck rather than down the side of the vessel, a better chance of getting it tight. But last minute underwater mechanics managed to secure the chain. I just want to confirm it is pulling because I'm getting um, uh, in my right ear. Uh, yeah, okay. With the chain finally around the hull, it's up to the team on shore to secure it. But today's diving time has run out. We've had our dive permit extended um, beyond dark so that we can um, hopefully get all the airbags in place to attempt to lift tomorrow morning. With the bags and chain in place, this first phase has been a success. But the cherished scrap treasure is still submerged. And the big question is, will this boat ever float again? Not far from Blackpool lies Fleetwood. This former fishing boat sunk to the bottom of the dock six months ago. And now it's up to the team from Adler and Allen and MMC Diving Services to get her out. Today, the dive team is heading off to rig the final inflatable bags. But will they be able to get this boat afloat? It's hazardous, yeah. We can get trapped, we can get squashed. A lot of things happen down there, mate, so... We have to be... managing the hazards. Such a perilous operation requires top-class expertise. Check your pins, mate. One, two, three. Dive ready for water. Comms check, one, two, three. Roger, bailout reading 280, bled down, ready for me. Yep, let's go. Despite all their preparations, conditions are tough. Stinks of fish, mate! It's an oil thing, it soaks up all the oil, but also sucks what? up all the fish guts, mate. Stinks. While the submerged diver works underwater, Jim discovers a piece of the boat's history. Right, there she is. She's in better day, isn't she? This sunken vessel was part of Stephen Welsh's life for over 30 years. I've been fishing around all my life near enough. I always had uh, the thoughts of going to sea from when I first left school. Steve began fishing at the age of 10 despite having polio when he was a kid, weakening his legs. I just started going out on small boats, and then bigger boats, and then bigger boats, and I then ended up uh, buying a bigger boat, which was the Colleen. Built in 1958, the Colleen is a 70-foot XXX, weighing 150 tonnes. In its prime, it could catch X tons of fish in one go. If you ask my wife, she would say to me that I was married to the ship rather than herself. Over the years, he earned the nickname Stormy Steve for his ability to go out in all weather. We just fish as hard as we possibly could and straight back to sea again on the next tide. And we'd just fish and fish and fish till we had a run out of energy or the weather turned bad. I never ever thought of fishing as a job, I just liked it that much. But when the dock slipway was removed in 2007, the big boats like Colleen became impossible to look after. The boats just deteriorated and deteriorated till they really then wasn't actually fit to go to sea. And uh, that's what killed us off. Colleen was sold to a new owner, but left to deteriorate in the dock. Then disaster struck. One particular day, something happened to the boat, we don't know what, whether some, some, some other vessel bumped into it, but uh, she sprang a plank and, uh, and, and sunk. 
Colleen was still in dock in 2018, but she sank less than a year later, with all Stormy Steve's treasure on board. There was quite a few personal artefacts, like a cross and a chain, St Christopher's. They was all kept in the wheelhouse clock. The team in Fleetwood are hoping to raise Steve's ship and find his treasure. But after 90 minutes, their plan hits a major problem as a snag threatens to puncture an inflatable bag. It's not coming, Sam. Because it's not working, mate. That's why we have to re rig it, so. So our problem is the line that was coming through under the hull, that kept coming forward, it's getting getting attached on some debris, so we're having to re-rig that bag, re-rig the line and try and pull it through in a different place around, around the outside of the debris. The team need to change course, but it's the more dangerous option. We're now in a situation where I'm to switch to a second plan. So we're going to go now, we're going to rig so that we can take the initial load on the chain that was there. There is a risk using the chain of chain failure and we're also narrowing the loading point so we have a greater risk of the chain cutting through the hull. Breaking the hull in two is the last thing they need. Dockside personal safety is under threat. I want to make it clear, very clear, wherever you are, as that boat comes up and she, if she threatens the roll over that way, there is a potential for a cleat to come flying off the deck on the end of the rope and smash your head off. Keep your head in. But after six months underwater, this ship is well and truly stuck in the mud. It's back to the drawing board for the team who have grossly underestimated the weight of the ship by 40 tonnes. Even more bags are needed to accommodate the excess weight. Oh, she's coming. Come on, sweetheart. Like a muscle on a rock. Going the right way. Colleen is vacuum packed to the floor of the harbour. The team reenact a scene from Colleen's days on the rough seas, rolling her back and forth. We can't put the divers under the vessel, partly suspended. So we have to keep rolling it from one side, rig bags, roll it to the other side, rig bags. And each time we lift, lift a bit, then we've got to get more chains further back. We need two more chains on to get it up. So it's constant rolling backwards and forwards. And people think we're not doing anything, but we are. We're, we're controlling it going one way, controlling it going the other, so we can work on the, um, on the high side so the divers aren't underneath the vessel. We've got the lift there. It's just we're running out of hours. At the 11th hour, the team finally get the boat to unstick and straighten up. Now all they need to do is wait for the morning tide to lift her. But after such a turbulent passage, will the Colleen be able to ride the morning wave? In the county of Lancashire is Fleetwood Port. After a treacherous few days working around the clock, Colleen has finally risen from the deep. A remarkable achievement for head diver Sam Connolly. Once we knew she was, uh, she was afloat, there was a, a massive sense of relief from everyone. We'd all worked so hard on this vessel to get her clear. It was, it was a massive sense of achievement and the morale went through the roof. We've all only seen Colleen from, from subsea, and, and, and we knew the size of the boat, but once she comes out of the water, once you actually see her afloat on her own two feet, it's, it's quite an incredible thing to see. She's much bigger than you imagine when you're seeing her underwater, feeling in black water around the scuppers and things. When she's out of the water, there's a, she's a much bigger vessel than you imagine. Six months underwater has not been kind to this former fishing beauty. We have several holes throughout the boat that we've had to try and bung up from the outside to try and seal her. She was leaking in the engine room, the fish hatch, uh, fish hold um, and the stone gland. So once we've sealed those, she's now dry and we're pumping once an hour for about 15 minutes just to keep the, the water up. With the ship finally afloat, 
it's time to go below deck. We've got a slight leak here. This is what the pumps are maintaining. It's the last two leaks. This was like a river coming in here when we were, when we were pumping out. We were pumping out faster than the water was coming in, but this was running through. We had a massive gush of water coming through here. Colleen's voyage to the bottom of the sea has led to some unusual growths. And plenty of sea life. You can see the, uh, the amount of growth that's been growing just in the short period that it's been down. And the, the boat was riddled with eels. We were throwing, throwing eels out the side of the boat. Eels were being pulled up into the pumps and thrown out the side of the boat. With the sea life removed, Sam takes a moment to appreciate Colleen's former life. There's a lot of romance with a boat this old. When you walk around it and you know people have spent time in rough weather, you know the history behind the boat. This is where the crew quarters were, where they slept at night. You've got two pipe cots here, another pipe cot down here, uh, it mirrored on the other side. This small area, this small cabin with their own little private hubs, birthed eight crew. Living in a small space for a long time at sea, you become a very, uh, a very small family. You either get on or you don't, so normally they get on. You've got to be a special sort of person to spend that much time in this smaller space, walking around in rough weather with the smell of the fish away from your friends and family. It's a very similar environment to, um, to us as a dive crew when we're in a confined space working together, under pressure, cold, wet environment. You, you've got to get on. The ship's owner was Stormy Steve and on his maiden voyage, he was given a gold St Christopher by his wife. But did the team recover this precious treasure? We opened up the clock. Behind the clock there was a Bible we took out and in the bottom there, in amongst the silt, was uh, three very small medals that we placed in the clock and returned to the owner. It was a rumour that there were medals in the St Christopher, but when we actually went forward and found those, and remember this boat came up on the 5th of February, it's the owner's golden wedding anniversary, the 5th of February, and it's the day his mother dies. So it's a very special day, so when we turned up with a Bible that was stored behind the clock with three medals, that was a particularly emotional experience for the owner. For Sam and his crew, it's home time. It's been a very difficult project. It's not been, it's not been as simple as we all thought, um, but uh, it's been challenging and then it's very rewarding now to see that finish. But for Admiral Mark Francis from Bob Francis Crane Hire, it's only the beginning. Now the ship is upright, it's time to get her to shore so the demolition can begin. And finally, Colleen embarks on her final journey. Colleen is towed until she hits the ground. Now the real work starts. Getting this boat on shore is all down to Mark. We must connect a rope and chains to get Colleen ready to be pulled further in. There's tension in the air and on the chains. The diggers hit reverse. snapping chain could have caused serious injury. And now Colleen's literally hanging on by a thread. The team must change tack. Mark has to connect the trawler to a pair of diggers. It's time for the machines to get their tracks wet. The two excavators are waiting for their prey. And Mark attaches a second leash. Diggers testing the ropes and chains to the limit. Colleen inches up the shore but goes as far as she can. She needs to rest above the low tide mark for the demolition to go ahead. But it's game over for this former trawler and it's victory for Mark and his team. Colleen comes to lay on her final resting place. For Mark, it's the end of the line. It's been a difficult process, you know, we've, we've had problems. Uh, a couple of steps forward, one step back. But now she's come to rest exactly where we planned her to, to, to be. Now Colleen waits for the vultures to descend, for tomorrow is demolition day. Back in the port of Fleetwood, after a gruelling operation to get her lifted off the bottom of the dock and onto shore, this 1950s fishing vessel has reached the end of her life. 
Today, it's time to shiver Colleen's timbers and send her to scrap. With machine drivers Ben Grocott and James XXX at the helm. Ben and James have to work against a rising tide to get the demolition done in a 12-hour window. Bite after bite, they devour the ship's bow, chomping down on the front deck and peeling back the ship's skin. For Reuben, seeing the ship finally being demolished is bittersweet. It's been very challenging getting to here. We've had uh, issues with uh, stability and uh, drawing the vessel out of the mud. So we're very relieved to be where we are this morning and uh, hoping to get the project finished in the next two days, um, having overrun a little. But to break up a vessel of this that's contributed so much to the local economy and local lives is, is pulls at your heartstrings a bit. We are quite elated we've got to this stage and the vessel is up and we are achieving what we set out to do. But there is this cloud that sort of hangs over you. And you know, in the making of this programme, you've come across the people that have been involved in it and the stories involved in it. And it seems simple and trivial, but you can't help but bring that into context while you're you know, doing a job like this. Together, the diggers pick apart Colleen's redundant carcass. Removing all her innards, it's a fight to the last mouthful. And Mark has to come between these two beasts to release a key piece of the ship. An epic trawler converted into a mammoth pile of scrap. And all the different materials get sorted into separate piles. Every last scrap must be removed from the shoreline. The majority of this vessel is timber, uh, waterlogged timber, and the metals we see, you can see behind me are being separated, and anything that can be salvaged and reused, the propeller will probably be salvaged. Um, there's some components that have been had as mementos. It is quite sad to see a vessel of this construction and this, this history almost completely vanishing. Um, so there will be some effort made to keep some components and some of the history as a contribution to the, the history of this area. From above, the final moments of Colleen are captured in all their glory. But time is running out as the tide comes in. But the tide retreats and the vultures continue their attack until the ship is devoured. As the sun sets for the last time on Colleen, the last morsels of her life on the high seas are saved. Put another fight to the last, for sure. <laughs> and Colleen's memory will be kept alive in the precious scrap treasure that remains.